All right, for this video, what we're going to do after we've created our part, now we need to save our part file. All right, so how we go ahead and save is we come up to the top left-hand corner and find our file tab. We're going to click on our file tab, and we're always going to come down to save as, but I don't want you to click on save as because save as has some extra uh, options when we go ahead and save. Right. Typically, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select the Save As function. Our Save As window is going to pop up, and most likely it's going to prompt you, like my computer did, to save to Documents. We do not want to do that. We need to make sure that Google File Stream shows up, or it'll say Google Drive on some of your computers, depending if you're working on your Chromebook or on a laptop or a desktop. All right, but your Google Drive file stream is where you want to be, or again, if it says Google Drive, that's fine too. So I'm going to go ahead and select my Google file stream, and then my Drive folder should pop up. I'm going to double click on that, and then I want to save it into my IED folder. So I'm going to double click there, and then I have a lot more folders than you're going to have. Um, if you just want to create like a new like inventor practice folder, we can go ahead and do that. There's this new folder button. I'm gonna, it looks like a little sun is uh, sitting on the top right hand corner. If you click on that, this is just what I'm gonna do for now while we're practicing and then we'll start to organize our files a little bit uh, more conveniently for us. And then we're gonna press enter or return to approve that name that we just added. All right, now we need to give our file a name. Now, naming an inventor is so important, especially when we get to our multi-view drawings, because our name shows up on our title block, and it's really important to name all of our parts accordingly. So uh, file management is one thing uh, that we're going to practice a lot of, because we're going to have a lot of inventor files and a lot of Google Docs, and we're just going to have a lot of documents. So naming our documents and naming our files is so important so that you can figure out very easily what files are what and where files are uh, specifically located. So this part file, I'm just going to call it our black uh, staircase. You can call it steps. I mean, whatever is going to make the most sense to you. Uh, black staircase, I know right away this is the figure that I'm doing. All right. And I'm going to save it as an inventor parts file. Again, the file extension is IPT for inventor part. Once you have your inventor practice folder um, selected, you're going to go inside of it and there should be no part files that go ahead and pop up. And I'm just going to go ahead and save that file. All right. Notice in my browser bar, it shows the extrusion, and then there's these little, I call them carrots, uh, these little arrow pointing things. Um, I open up the carrot, and the extrusion sketch is hiding below that. So again, your browser bar is going to keep track of all those changes that you've made. So if you've made a mistake, you can open up your sketch, you can right click on your sketch, and you can go to edit sketch, or what I prefer is double clicking. <clears throat> on sketch one and it'll go ahead and open up. And that way, if you're unhappy with some of the dimensions, like if I wanted this to be a height of five instead of three, I could go ahead and update that sketch feature, finish my sketch, and it'll go ahead and automatically update that part. I don't have to go back to the drawing board and remake it, which is really nice. Another fun thing, um, these two drop downs up at the top one says generic and one says default. Um, your generic dropdown, as you can see, has all kinds of different materials. So sometimes when we get into uh, specific projects or assignments, I will ask you to assign a specific material to whatever we're working on because that changes our properties. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but I know my uh, blocks were a oak material uh, that I used for my actual parts. So I'm going to go ahead and change my material to oak. And then you're going to notice that the uh, drop down that said default now defaulted to white oak. 
because of my material changing. But what we can also do, and everything's in alphabetical order, um, but what we can also do is change the color um, to black so that it matches, but now it's a black wood, uh, which looks kind of funny now that I'm looking at it. Um, but we have that option to go ahead and change our materials and change our colors. So if that is of interest to you, you can go ahead and do that. We also have these little color wheels here that you can go ahead and use, and we'll get into those in a little bit. But that is how you save. That is how you edit your sketch. So again, I can come back in. I'm not happy with that five. So if I double click on it, I can change my dimension back. It'll go ahead and update. We just have to finish that sketch. It'll bring me back into my isometric drawing and update that feature for me, which is really nice.